Hey team, welcome back for another great lesson. G'day Dory, in the background there. Hey, our lesson's gonna be looking at this guy. Hey Nemo. We're gonna be looking at the life cycles of clownfish. Come and join us in our aquarium. And let's have a little look at what we're gonna be learning. What am I learning today? Today we're looking at to learn about the life cycle of the clownfish. Some interesting facts about clownfish including their external features, adaptations of these fish and the physical environment that helps them survive. Why am I learning this? To understand the complex nature of reef ecosystems and their inhabitants as well as that science helps explain the world around us. How will I know that I'm successful? Today, at the end of this lesson, I can identify external features and adaptations of the marine creatures in the Biak Aquarium, be able to explain the life cycle of a clownfish, and observe, collect, and interpret data to ensure these marine creatures can survive in their environment. Here we are guys, welcome to the Boyne Island Environmental Education Centre Clownfish Aquarium. It's only a small little place, but it houses some pretty cool friends. Can you see them over my shoulder? Hey, let's go and say g'day and learn a little bit more about them. Our aquarium houses four different pairs of breeding clownfish. It also has a beautiful reef tank with a few different species. And we're really lucky to have these really cool fish here in our aquarium with us. We have a few different types of species to show various shapes, sizes, colours, external features and also their behaviours. Let's talk a little bit more about each one. These guys are our common clownfish or orange perculars. They're a cute little couple, and I really want you to focus on how they are quivering and showing off to each other. It's really interesting to see those behaviors. These are what we call behavioral adaptations. Watch how the sand is sifted. Watch how the smaller fish does some quivering back and little jerking movements and watch how the larger fish responds with a really sharp quiver in her pot. Pretty cool behavior, hey? Fish not only have behavioral adaptations where they change their behaviors to suit their environment, fish in particular have some really, really cool ways that they have grown into various shapes and sizes. Take a look here at our perculars. Look at their pectoral fins, their dorsal fins, the real paddle shape of their tail, and all those beautiful coloured bandings. Every fish looks a little bit different. Check out our beautiful maroon or spine-cheeked clownfish. Beautiful red colours, nice gold banding, and watch as the little fish starts to submit to that larger fish by showing those quivering behaviours. This fish can be really dominant and very aggressive, coming right to the glass as we saw before. Can you identify these external features of this maroon clownfish? Pay particular attention to the shape of the fins, the colours, and that really beautiful blue and yellow banding. Watch our barrier reef clownfish chasing each other. What a behavior that is. These guys are very common in our Southern Great Barrier Reef. Different color to that traditional orange color clownfish. Look at the different shaped tail being a little bit squarer, the rounder body, 
and there's a few different colours, especially that one just behind its eyes. Check out these beautiful false clownfish, or black version of the Ocellaris. The orange version is your traditional Nemo. Great behaviours by the big female, showing dominance, cleaning, and trying to avoid our camera. Beautiful, striking black and white colour. This time, I wonder if you can identify the features that these arrows are pointing towards. Look back on the other clownfish to give you some hints or clues. Here's your traditional Nemo. G'day Nemo. Orange, white and black. Pretty happy in his little bubble tip anemone. That's pretty cool, hey? Pretty cool to have four different species of clownfish in our tanks. Did you know though that there's actually 30 different species in the ocean? Wow! Now that we know a little bit about their external features and a little bit about their behaviour, let's go have a look at their life cycle. I reckon there's a few facts that you might just not know. It's pretty different, pretty exciting. Let's go and explore. Stage one is all about establishing the hierarchy. Clownfish are actually born neither male nor female. But what happens is that the largest and most dominant fish in that little colony ends up being the big boss female, the one that lays eggs. The next one in line is the male that gets to breed with the female. And all the rest are males down the hierarchy. If a female dies or moves on, the largest male will actually change sex and become the new dominant female. What? Righto boys, you need to do what I say. I'm the boss. Okay, Mrs. Boss, no worries. Yep, no worries. Stage two is all about the courting behaviour. The female and male pair often display courting behaviours, especially when they're ready to breed. The female gets a little bit thicker, they clean and fuss over their pots or their rocks, and they also start chasing, biting and even quivering. What a weird display of behaviours. Can you see these guys twitching, quivering and shaking, cleaning their pots? Wow! And what about these guys here, biting and chasing? That big bossy female wants to show her dominance. Stage three is all about laying the eggs. Usually during the night, the female will lay her eggs somewhere on the surface of a rock, or in our case, in our tanks, it'll be on the surface of the pot. Stage four is all about caring for the eggs. This is the male's job. The male will spend the next seven to 10 days looking after those eggs by fanning them with his fins to keep plenty of oxygen up to them. Good job, dad. The next stage, stage five, is all about egg development. The eggs start off small, but they develop very quickly and start to change colour. They elongate and you can even see the eyes starting to form. They look a little bit weird. In stage six, we're talking about hatching and fry development. After they hatch, the eggs are going to start to eat the rotifers, which are the live plankton that they like to eat. They are bright green in colour and not really much to look at but these will help them grow big and fat and strong. Stage seven is where the larvae move towards being juvenile fish. These tiny fish start consuming lots of energy and food 
and go from being tiny little floating creatures to darting around like tiny little toddlers, little mischief makers. I can never keep up with you kids. Hey, stop that. Where are you going? Get over here. Don't eat that. Don't lick that. The last stage is stage eight where the clownfish go about their normal lives. They will enter the reef system and find a home in their own anemone. They'll begin to fall into a hierarchy of their own in a beautiful clownfish colony. In captivity, they could be live between three to five years and out in the wild, up to 10 years. These guys have a mutual relationship known as symbiosis with the anemone. The clownfish helps the anemone with food and the anemone provides the clownfish with a little bit of protection from the reef environment. They look really cool when they're living together on this reef system. Who would have thought how complex the life of a little tiny clownfish is? Pretty cool to discuss, isn't it? In this last part of our lesson, we're just gonna have a little bit of a look at the physical conditions that make an environment the perfect place to live for our reef fish. And in particular, these guys, the clownfish. This picture is a perfect example of a reef setup. Lots of hiding spots and holes and nooks and crannies where fish can feel safe in their physical environment. The lighting is important on the reef. Reef has natural filtered light. This blue light is an example of evening light, but it also has the UV rays that will allow coral growth and anemone growth, as well as providing the fish with the energy they need. We change the lighting up for the fish to emulate what a natural reef environment would be like. As you can see in this clip, we even have natural occurring red algae that starts to grow on some of the surfaces. This is our tank setup. It is really important to get the tank set up correct to make sure that the water quality is at an optimum level for the fish. At the bottom is the sump. Then the water gets pumped through this system up into our tanks. You'll also notice that the lighting on top plays a big part in our tank setup. Let's talk a little bit more about this. This is our sump setup. Water comes from the tanks down into this sump at the bottom of the tank system. Water travels in the direction that the arrows are showing. It flows through the macro algae and the coral rubble which provide a filtering system and that good bacteria for the water. It'll flow to the back corner where the pump will take that nice clean water back up into our tank system for the fish. There is also a protein skimmer in the back corner which helps take out the animal proteins out of the water system. Inside the tanks with the fish and other creatures in it we have a few things to note. We have our water siphon which allows the water to drain back down into the sump we have our air sponge at the back, and this provides oxygenated water and lots of bubbles, which is really important for the fish. We have a power head, which provides water flow and a wave action, which is natural uh, to the reef. And also we put in a lot of live rock, which has a lot of good bacteria and provides a nice spot for the fish to hide and filters that water continuously. Highlighted here is our salt water mixing tank. We take pure reef salt, mix it up with some tap water, and we add a few other things to make sure all the chemicals are taken out. This is super important for our beautiful reef fish and other creatures that live in our tank system. Highlighted here on our workbench is our posters that highlight the weekly or daily tasks that are needed to happen, as well as our 
water testing quality parameters and the methods needed to conduct these tests to make sure our water is of the highest quality. Highlighted here in our workbench are our water quality testing kits. This allows us to test the quality of the water to ensure the physical environment for our creatures in our tanks are at the optimum level. Australian curriculum links and the associated tasks. Take a look at these tasks that students can complete. These are like little mini assessment tasks, completely linked to the Australian curriculum and should keep students well occupied and utilising the lesson video. Well there it is guys, there's our clownfish lesson. Hopefully you've learnt lots and enjoyed our time together. Have a crack at those tasks and we'll see you next time. Happy learning!